Hello and welcome back to another gaming guide. My name is Saiken and today we're looking at the newly released DLC from War Tales Pirates of Beleriand. This is going to be a short, concise and as always informative guide regarding everything you need to know about the DLC. I will give you 10 tips that I wish I knew before starting Beleriand. Tip number one, how to start out and where to even begin the journey to Beleriand. So in order to inform you about that, you need to be in Tiltran country and uh, more precisely on the southern part of Tiltran, there is a dock right here, which allows you to rebuild a ship that has been stranded there. You will get an in-game notification that uh, there is a rumor about the ship. You need to get there and you need to pay, depending on your difficulty, 200 gold pieces, plus bring up to 40 lumber on extreme difficulty. That brings us neatly to the following question or the following tip. Tip number 1B, so to speak, how to get the lumber if you don't already have it. I have conveniently marked a couple of locations for you. If you are in the Tiltran location, I would uh, recommend you to check out the uh, Woodcutter's Camp if you haven't done it uh, yet. There are two locations, the Land Farm and the Tiltran, uh, Tiltran Lumber Mill that both yield a... Um, lock where you can chop additional wood and on top of it this this and this and this forest typically have a lot of spare locks around if you do have already installed all of uh, the trading routes then you can simply buy lumber from them once you do have the lumber move down and get your journey started that brings us nicely to tip number two how to manage and upgrade your ship so a ship in Beleriand contains a hull a sail a figurehead and a ballista if you are starting out you will only have a hull and a sail there are three types of each to really quickly go through them the hulls are responsible for how quickly uh, you can maneuver and how much fatigue it takes you to row. The sails are basically responsible to allow you to catch wind and we'll come to that in tip number three in detail. The figureheads uh, give you bonus either with entering other um, vessels or by simply getting a bonus for completing missions. And then finally later in the game you get a ballista which you can nicely use in order to actually shoot at other ships and get them down. Each of uh, these components comes in a normal form. Once you have the normal form, uh, you can find builder's guides across the entirety of Beleriand. With a builder's guide uh, and the basic form and material, you can then upgrade it to a rare form. Uh, this is the example of everything that is upgraded. So there are plenty of those around. You should start with just the basic equipment. And if I could give you any tip that I learned, I wish I knew that the upgraded versions are significantly better than the uh, normal versions. And me personally, I like the round hull uh, plus the spanker sail. Uh, the others are not so important, but the spanker sail in particularly is. So bonus tip, tip number 2B, so to speak. How do you repair your ship? Your ship does have durability. You are typically losing the durability by being shot or by running against obstacles as the durability drops. So will the components uh, and at some point they will be disabled. The moment that your ship is at 40 or less percent of durability, it'll be incre incredibly difficult to continue uh, riding it because the sails will be off and you can only raw. That in itself is a problem and therefore you should regularly repair it. In order to do that, you need to um, just create wooden bars, need a little bit of resin and, uh, and a couple of other things, which we will discuss later in that video and you will be able to repair it. So that brings us nicely to tip number three, how to steer a ship efficiently in Balarian. Let's look at the three different sails and shortly look at how wind functions. So on the bottom of your screen, you do see the little icon for wind. 
and there is a specific upgrade that you might want to buy which is called geometric calculations i wish i knew how important that was because it shows you directly from which direction the wind would come instead of needing to use this map here in order to orient yourself each of the three different sails have different parameters the square sail which is the starting sail that you typically start with will have a good zone in the back moderate zone in the sides and a bad zone in the front the second sail the triangular sail does have a neutral zone in the back good zones on both sides and a bad zone in the front and the third sail is the spanker sail which has a very very narrow uh, bad zone in the front but everything else therefore is a neutral zone which one you are using is up to you. I personally like to use the spanker sail simply because it gives the largest amount of freedom and flexibility. As long as you are not within the poor zone, so that is typically in front of each of uh, the ships, you will see that you are not uh, netting anywhere between three and six knots. The moment that you uh, ride against the wind, you see how it dies down. Uh, by clicking the sprint key, which is per default shift, you can then raw and uh, keep your companions continuously rawing on. That, however, will effectively take their stamina and you need to rest sooner. So, use it sparingly. Which brings us nicely to tip number four. What to bring into the adventure of Beleriand to have an advantage over your competition. So if I had to do it again, I would recommend you a couple of things. Number one, there are a few resources that are sparse in Beleriand, most noticeably lumber and iron. And with lumber also resin tends to be a little bit more sparse. So if I was to do it uh, all over again, I would potentially pack around 30 to 50 lumber, 30 to 50 iron, and around 25 resin. It is helpful, depending on how many um, fights you're going to have, to also uh, pick a lot of cloth. You will need uh, that for the torches in order to explore the temple ruins. Uh, the merchants in Balerion sell Arcadian steel. If you have uh, spare Arcadian steel lying around, then I suggest taking that with you as well, because you will need it for a couple of nice items. And finally, I would suggest you to bring 50 hemp, which is not only used for ropes and a couple of other things, but also to create new components for ships. Uh, what is going to be there plentiful is seaweed, uh, but it never ha hurts to also bring a few more tools and some healing potions. So that should get you started. If you have plenty of that, you can just breeze through the 25-30 hours worth of DLC. Tip number five, pirate maps and treasures. It wouldn't be a pirate adventure if there wouldn't be a proper treasure. And there are a lot of treasure maps in and around Beleriand. And since I want to make your life as easy as possible, you might want to take a nice little screenshot of this overview here because I've marked all of the relevant uh, treasures for you. Night Island, Drowned Man, Dun Island, Turtle Island, Sarna, Tabasa, Isle of the Worthy and the Isle down here as well as Mern and Crocodile Island? Uh, Croc Island, I think it was called. So all of them contain one treasure each. Each of those treasures do not only give you knowledge points, but will uh, create the following. There are a couple of ship commandos that you can only learn with these secret treasures, kind of the ancient knowledge of the pirates that you can then add up for yourself. One is not yet implemented. Everything else can be found as you are moving through the campaign. So no worries, you're not going to lose anything. But if you already know the locations, you might just want to get the treasure if you're on that island. Tip number six. I wish I knew what the cool new loot is going to look like. I don't want to spoil too much for you, but just a bit of snippets. There are a couple of claw weapons for the pugilist, uh, the new character class that is included. One of them is the Sipper Qatar, which you are getting through a quest line, which has a very nice, a couple of very nice stats and stacks fever. 
Another one is uh, the arena weapon, which is called the Ripper, and uh, that is an equally interesting weapon uh, that can trigger a specific mechanic called Delirium. On top of uh, those, there are a couple of just interesting helmets, a crown of the seas, few legendary trinkets, but also something that, uh, some of the things that you can craft yourself. Most noticeably, I would highlight that under the armor uh, enhancements you can now find brooches and these brooches are actually quite good they all have a slight negative but also a massive positive uh, for instance uh, there is a dexterity and the strength brooch for 10 each or armor layer for 10 each of the respective main set and comes at the expense of very little armor. My personal favorite is the Mirrored Brooch with a massive 15% critical hit at the expense of movement and we do have an armor brooch. So look out for them. If you can find uh, the recipes, make sure that you get your hands on them. Tip number seven, the Lords of the Seas. There is a leaderboard and every pirate is participating in a challenge. Uh, you are starting at the 11th pirate on the leaderboard and as your status grows, you are getting renown or reputation as it is called in-game. You can get that by defeating other pirates, uh, preventing plunder, just fighting in general, doing quests and so on and so forth. You will get up the leaderboard. The moment that you surpass the fame or reputation of another captain, they will start hunting you down. Don't sweat too much about finding them. They will uh, eventually find you and then they will try to fight you. We'll come to that in a second as we're talking about boarding and what I wish I would knew about boarding as well. As you grow and become more renowned, you eventually will get to the top of uh, the leader uh, board and defeat the reigning champion, Kyrti. Tip number eight. I wish I knew that you need to put the crew in in order to get better results from sailing. There is a helmsman, which is kind of the captain uh, that is definitely always required. Then the moment that you do have a ballista, you can put a gunner in. You want to take either someone with a high strength or someone with a high dexterity. The person in the lookout will, uh, with a high strength, uh, help to prevent slowdowns of ships. With a high dexterity, scout out faster. If you run a bard, that can help to reduce fatigue. So you could put your bard into the drummer spot. And finally, one of the positions that I underestimated and wish I knew how important it was is the fisherman. Which, if you do have a fisherman, put him there and just benefit from driving over a lot of or riding over a lot of fish. And how that looks in game is uh, there will be schools of fish plenty of fish and all you need to do is literally just ride over them and there you go you got six fish easy easy life to uh, find enough food for all of your crew tip number nine how to win and survive the arena in Beleriand. that's funnily enough a pretty good uh, tip so mild spoilers ahead we do have Oris here she's the champion a pugilist by herself and Oris has a nasty combination because she's rocking the ripper uh, which is the weapon that you will gain from her uh, she will st uh, switch stances every single time that it's her turn and every second time she gets delirium delirium is a defensive stance uh, she gets two charges of delirium and those stack for every stack of delirium once she gets back to the aggressive stance she gets an attack uh, an extra attack of opportunity so in simple terms as long as the fight drags on uh, auras will just rip you a new one uh, by attacking you 12 14 16 times in a row and no matter how strong your tank at some point you're going to crumble now here's the relatively easy way of going about it uh, Oris has a particularly nasty additional ability which is called Hard Bolt. I wish I knew that in advance. She cannot with a single attack lose more than 10% of her health. So if you fight uh, Oris, I would suggest you wait until you are level 12. And funnily enough, the answer to Oris is the pugilist themselves without going too deep into 
the skilling. Their ultimate attack is called thrashing, which allows them to attack uh, at least seven slash eight times for a reasonable amount of damage. So let me show you how I would do it if I knew what was going on. Number one, I would lead with an ability that for sure is going to reduce uh, the guard uh, of her. Then we're using uh, the classical uh, retaliation build on our tank. In case you don't know what that is, feel free to uh, watch my guides to see how you can turn your tank into an absolute monster machine. Just look at the amount of damage that they are doing. Every single engage uh, is followed up uh, by a further uh, point of damage. So, right off the bat, Ores um, already starts with a good uh, amount of damage. This here is expert expert uh, difficulty plus hard mode on top of that. So normally she would have like 600 hit points. Here she has twice the amount. And now here comes the kicker uh, uh, with it. Yeah, just get out of the arena. I'm uh, trying to showcase a little bit here. So. Here's the kicker out of it. Uh, we can now use our attack stance in order to uh, start dealing damage. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and Oris is leaving the arena. I wish I knew how absolutely gorgeous this ability is before starting the arena. There we go, earned ourselves a couple of crowns. On to the last tip. All right, tip number 10, how to do proper boarding and how to play the boarding. So if you are going to play through Balerion, you will see a lot of those boarding maneuvers, basically naval battle. There are two things that you should know. Number one are these ropes here, which allow you to reposition a couple of selected individuals. Number two are the ballistas, which either side can load, that takes one action, and then shoot, which takes another action. The third mechanic that you should be aware of is the pushback mechanic uh, to effectively push someone over a deck. If you, for whatever reason, do have a knockback attack, you are able to push enemies over uh, board and they will start hanging around uh, the side. So that's a lot to take in. Let's see it in action and also showcase to you how I would do a proper boarding. For starters, if uh, mm, uh, you are new to Balerion, I would put the tanks near to each of the ropes because that will allow them uh, to go right in the middle all of the DPS are ready to go. Number two, I would like to control them as much as possible. I personally love suppressive fire because that will keep as many of them at bay as humanly possible. So not only does it deal a phenomenal amount of damage, but it also reduces them quite sizably. Uh, you can then continue uh, with uh, whatever else you would like to do. For instance, uh, start taking a couple of pot shots uh, to make it worse for them. Um, but the next thing that I would want to show you in this tip is how to actually land and board. So, say you are done with your initial barrage of attacks, everything has nicely worked out, then it is time for the tanks to come in. Just like finding an exit in the undead cities, this uh, boarding attack will use your standard attack, so you cannot do standard attack and board at the same time. What you will see though is uh, you will get a landing screen and if you position it correctly, you can even push people overboard. I would always recommend you to drop a tank behind the enemy lines, basically disabling their ballista. Secondly, drop a tank in front to their sails, basically disabling their access to the sails. We'll do that uh, right afterwards. And then drop one into the center as well. That strategy for larger groups has worked out very well for me. Here you can see an example of just area zone denial. If enemies can't reach you, they will by themselves go into these red cir uh, circles. Uh, here they're trying to essentially push us overboard. Uh, they will go up um, into these circles and effectively get hit for free. 
Next up, how to deal with uh, people that are overboard. As you can see, one of our companions unfortunately has gone overboard. There, the race ability comes into uh, play. You can uh, pull them up, and if you do that before the enemy effectively has a chance to trample on them, you are going to save them. However, if the enemy is going to do it faster than you are, uh, being able to rescue them, then your companion is going to die uh, on the lower difficulties. I think they are just injured on the higher difficulties. It is a character death. So be very, very mindful. It is dangerous and keep in mind uh, who is going to act next. Finally, for the boarding, the ballista itself, which is also an interesting uh, mechanic. As you are coming closer to the ballista, you again need a standard action, so a standard attack, in order to actually utilize uh, them. And it allows you to uh, use a long shooting uh, cone. It's not a cone, it's actually a line. And said line will knock enemies down. Fortunately, I can't show it uh, here with our rogue, who's just currently decimating uh, the enemies. But... Um, it effectively allows you to um, pull enemies off of the bridge. So, what's the basic strategy? I wish I knew with boarding that controlling these uh, areas, specifically about around the ballista and around uh, the planks, are ultra important. Once you do control them, as you can see here, uh, you will have no problem whatsoever uh, fighting a ballista shot. Unfortunately, here we don't have the action. A ballista shot can then be issued and would penetrate every single one of them. Ballistas, however, do have a 45 degree angle on both sides and cannot be shot into other directions. So that's really it. That Those are the 10 tips that I wish I knew before starting the Balerian DLC. I hope you enjoy the DLC as much as I do. It is a great game, 30 hours worth of play. If you enjoy guides, feel free to take a look at the other ones that I did. I do have quite a comprehensive selection of guides around War Tales and other strategy games. If anything else um, you'd like to know, leave a comment in uh, the section below. Other than that, enjoy gaming and see you soon. Bye bye.